that's not what was supposed to happen at all. Huh. Well, oh well. <laughs> Let's start the show. Forget it. There was supposed to be an intro and all that stuff, but who cares? There it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, man. That's like the second best, shart, best start to, the, to one of these ever. Number one, of course, being when I said the name of the wrong podcast. Anyway... <laughs> If you, if you shart at the start of the show, then that's I don't want to know. Well, it's going to be a long two hours for me, I'll tell you that much. But, uh, so yes, I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. I'm Crux. I'm Zenify. And <laughs> you are currently listening to the <clears throat> Sin Shop Podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. So we are going to be talking tonight about bad maker habits. And uh, we've we've got plenty of them. Apparently, one of them is pushing the wrong button on the stream deck. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, and how they can mess with you, how they can mess with your automation, and uh, keep you from achieving all of your maker dreams. But uh, uh, before we go there on tonight's show, uh, we we've got all that coming up. But first, we got an announcement on the shop. We are of course located one zero seven five American Pacific Drive, Suite C in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, unless you're a member, you're going to have to wait a little bit to come check out the shop. Uh, we're currently closed to the public, uh, but we would like to remind you that while we are closed to the public, if, you're in a, if you are in a shared space elsewhere, make sure that you wear a mask and clean your tools, surfaces, and material before and after you use them. I got one of those there for you, too. And, uh, man, I am, <laughs> I, am, I am lagging tonight. I don't know. What's up? Yeah. At any rate, uh, yeah, Dave, what's up? We have been doing, like, one-off tours if you contact us at the time and let us know. And so Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, don't, we just don't have public open nights. That's right. If you'd like to know uh, when one of those are, as a matter of fact, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. And if you want to stay updated on the shop's open status, you can check out sinshop.org forward slash COVID status to find the latest information. And with that, we push this button here. There we are. All right. So, when we were uh, a little bit, a little bit of, of background here. When we were, I was cutting together the intro for for the channel, the one that you see on Twitch. If you're, you know, just coming into the channel for the first time, you're like, "Hey, what's all this about?" You can you can look at that video and, and go from there. And so, one of the little clips that I saw when I was cutting that together was the trap of early announcements, and uh, that kind of stuck out to me. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that, that is the truth," because there's a lot of stuff that I haven't done. And not 24 hours after that, Zen reached out to me about doing a show on bad habits. And since one of my bad habits is overly weighting correlation, it did seem like a pretty good show idea. So, Zen, returning champion, so, who needs no introduction. Yeah. I love yeah. your... I, unless this is like the first time you're watching the show, then you yeah. might want to be introduced to him. Well, that's... You that's, should go back to episodes 10, 12... 14, 16, I think I skipped 18, 19, and then I think like 21, I don't know. You, you actually did miss last week, too. I did miss last week, yeah. but that wasn't the first time. It wasn't? Shockingly. No, it wasn't the first, because if you look at the episode numbers, uh, I was on every even one since yeah. 10, but somewhere around 18, I don't know what happened, mm -hmm. but I wasn't on it, and then I wasn't on it for the next week, and then I ended up on an odd number instead of the even set hmm. and then so now i think what episode number is this i think i might be back on evens now it's 26 Six. yeah so i'm back on evens again you, you have arrived excellent all right <laughs> well so so for you can see the episode number like right down there so. oh shit you're right oh, <laughs> those things will sneak up on you yeah <laughs> episode numbers come up at you, come at you pretty fast <laughs> if you don't look in the lower left hand corner of the screen you might miss it um, yeah. So uh, you've been uh, just just for the the sake of of people that have been uh, you know that are just tuning in for the first time and there 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 might be some uh, some fine people from uh, uh, one of the, a couple of the message boards I've been trolling lately but uh, the uh, uh, for those people who, so you, how long have you been going to the shop now about what five uh, yeah five years okay five and a half years just about very cool yeah and, and just. You, Go ahead. Started coming around for podcast reasons, and then I stuck around for learning reasons, and then I stuck around even longer because I was made a vetted member, and then a 
director and now a secretary we director. Suck you into <laughs> additional responsibilities. Yeah. And it suck me into like the, you know, the top like three or four responsibilities of the shop. <laughs> Aside from the fine people that actually go there and run the, you know, classes. <laughs> it's, um, been, it's been downhill yeah. ever since. Yeah. Yeah, it's just went up. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's fine. But yeah, so I've been coming around that long and. You know, I'm recently more eager to go into the shop, um, mainly because my fiance and I just have like random ideas of new stuff that we want to do, like, you know, like Dungeons and Dragons dice, like Mm -hmm. to go there and tumble them and stuff like that. Um, So now it's actually like lame, Uh, especially because I'm so far. And I know I'm obviously a member and I have, you know, unfettered access, but um, it's so far. (laughs) For your house, you mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I get it. I, yeah, it's not for me. If I didn't, and I work like in the middle of the city, and the sim shop is on the east side of the city, and I live on the far west side of the city, and so after work, I basically go <laughs> home. I mean, I could move. I, that's the reason I I moved to the west side for work, and then like two weeks after I got done moving, I got a new job that wasn't next to that work anymore. Mm. And then I was only at that job for like nine months. And now I'm back across yeah, the city I mean, again. Think of all the fun you'll have, like re-automating everything. Plus you no. might get lucky and actually get your deliveries of like food and stuff. Actually, no. Yeah, you're correct with that. Uh, I'm still always so paranoid. I mean, I've been getting Postmates and stuff like that, like just like delivery services more often. Um, but every time I, in all of the like the notes fields, I have, please be vigilant about the house number. There's been mistakes in the past. <laughs> and it's just like, I have that in every single one of them. And most of the time, and actually, I think since I put that in there, uh, we haven't missed a delivery yet. Oh, nice. Maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, I can't even get ketchup. And this guy's like, please be vigilant. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> be vigilant, my friends. See that you're out there to have... uh, Don't worry about the ketchup. Um, we must be vigilant. But now we're actually worried because uh, recently I moved um, a fairly large, not a truck, but it's a truck. I don't want to say I have a truck, but there's a mm. truck in my driveway mm. um, that's now blocking the house number. <laughs> and oh. so I expect the next delivery to not go as smoothly. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh, but no about about the automation that uh, Crux was saying. Yeah, no, I don't necessarily want to move to have to redo my automation again because I'm actually in the process right now of migrating a lot of my automation to um, a new controller, uh, and so that's really fun. Uh, you know, for some reason, I don't. It doesn't sound like it's actually fun. It's not. No, <laughs> you are 100 percent correct. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> it, All uh, right. I mean. I've been given great advice on the past on how to uh, work through situations like this, mm-hmm. which is you uh, approach it like you're moving a house. You do one room at a time. And once that room's complete, you're good to go. But I don't do that because I have like the worst, you know, ADD in the world. I don't. That's a lie. But I do have pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so I'll just I'll be like going to reset a switch to adopt it to the new controller, and you know I'll be like okay I'm gonna do let's say the downstairs bathroom today, mm-hmm. and because the downstairs bathroom aside from the toilet itself there's no seat in there, and while I'm like messing with everything I have to like do typing on my keyboard on my phone, and so I'll go sit on the couch, mm-hmm. and then I go sit on the couch and I look over and we're off you know to the backyard and I'm like oh wait I need to reset that one as well. And then I'll oh, actually have to reset the pantry. And then I forget, and then I'm on another task, and then it's impossible to actually finish the house and the whole migration because of that. No, I, I, I feel you. So I've been working on getting some music together for the uh, for Mondays to like play in the background because it's our project night, uh-huh. right? So we're just basically sitting there, you know, doing stuff. Sometimes there's a lull in the conversation, and having a little bit of music in the background is a good thing, right? So this morning I get up, I. I and I had this idea for this song in my head. I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. I should I should get up and record that. Yeah. And so I get up, I take the dog for, for a walk, and I come back, and I'm ready to go. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? I should update Meetup real quick. So I jump onto Meetup, and I'm getting ready to update, and I'm like, why in the world do I have to make this stupid, like, not stupid, but make this announcement for the show 
every single week when I could just, you know, and I have to do it here. I have to do one for the, uh, you know, for like the forums, you know, for the, for the discords. I have to do one for uh, um, YouTube. I have to do one for OBS, you know, for, uh, for Twitch, you know, so I have to do all these different ones and they use the same information. Why do I not have something that has variables in Google Docs? And then I can just type it once and say, make me the things, and it, it does the thing. So five hours later, I had that. <laughs> it works, and it's pretty It's pretty legit. I'll show it to you later on if you want, if you want to check yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah. But, um, but you, you just type in a form, and then it, it kicks out a document for you with all of the things that you need. Boom, boom, boom. But um, so that's awesome, but I didn't work at all on this song. I really hope I remember it, you know, next time I sit down and actually work on music. But anyway, so I feel you. I, 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 should, I should work on automating, like, uh, a bot that actually announced, like, when we go, when they're planning on streaming to the uh, Synchop channel and a couple of the places we post it. But... Uh, Let's talk about that later. There is a Discord okay. plugin. That would be helpful. Yes. Yes, I think yeah. I, I believe it would. To Twitter and to our Discord. Yeah, that would be that'd be nice to have set up. Absolutely. But anyway, so yeah. from the the um the segue for automation to bad habits, um I had one that I brought up to you. I love uh, this story. Go for it. <laughs> I think I kind of brought it up to you. Um I came home on it was this past Monday and for my automation to work, there's tons of variables, right? There's motion sensing, there's contact sensors, there's presence detection, whether it be Bluetooth or network or GPS, any of the, it, it, there's a variety of um, sensors and tracking throughout the house. Well, those only work though if I also do certain things. Now, it's not that hard to walk into a room for the motion to go, oh, there's somebody in here <laughs> and then it triggers, right? Okay. Well, that's that's all fine and dandy, but the problem comes with contact sensors. So all my contact sensors they have they attribute and uh, attribute to the automation that kicks off or kicks off any scripts and whatnot. Um, and if I don't close a door, right? I'm just like lazy and I just kind of like swing it closed, but I don't fully shut it. Mm -hmm. Well, one. The, it's going to throw the automation off because it didn't detect the door shutting, so it won't start any timers or anything like that to turn off the lights. But then it throws off automation on if I'm upstairs and it thinks that you know I'm either in the bedroom or the office, won't turn on certain lights because it still thinks I'm occupied downstairs. Uh, and so the reason this is a bad habit is because literally on Monday I did it again. I just like the pantry door, for instance, um, that has a light in it i just kind of let it you know gently swing shut and it didn't latch and it didn't trigger the contact sensor so the light just stays on indefinitely <laughs> and uh at that moment i turned around uh, i messaged you and i said <laughs> i i i have a bad habit that i'm acknowledging uh is a problem and then i promptly turned around and sat on the couch and as i was messaging you i looked over and i still never shut that pantry door then either uh -huh. even though i turned around and i leaned on the counter acknowledged it to you because my intent was to acknowledge the problem and then shut it and walk away but i still never shut it so okay. or you have like a bit of automation in there where it knows that you're not going to have the pantry door open for like hours on end yeah so there's still the food in there so yeah. like after a certain amount of time it would just turn off the light and then maybe send you a notification of a, Oh, by the way, the pantry door isn't all the way shut. I've thought about that. I've, I've definitely thought about doing like notification triggers. Um, and the problem with that is I ignore a lot of notifications. Um, and this is only recently started as well. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, eh. that like anytime uh, I've had it with like work where you've like, set up like notifications for like monitoring and whatnot. And that eventually yeah. like the volume of those messages gets to a certain point that is like, all right, I've seen this yeah. again and again and again. I'm just going to start ignoring this thing, which mm -hmm. is a bad habit. But yeah, I do that all the time. Yeah. 
Um, and I have specific email filters where I like, yeah, I know you're a problem. So I'm just going to filter you over here. Where you don't actually notify me. You just go into the ether of this folder and I'll get to you. One of these days. <laughs> the problem is I never get to it. Right. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, uh, I do have some of those scripts, uh, crux where like, uh, the pantry, for instance, it will turn off after an hour. Um, but you are correct in that I need to be taught a lesson. Uh, and so I'm thinking, uh, instead of just doing a notification where I'll just mindlessly clear it because I just don't care, uh, I should program like my kitchen Google Home or like my office Google Home, and it'll announce to me that I didn't do that. And it could just annoy me enough to where I'll just turn off that audio notification <laughs> and I'll just still do the magic dark show. But, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll help. I'm, I'm trying to change up my habits, like sleep routines and stuff like that, but we'll see if, uh, if that pantry door ever gets shut. I mean, honestly, or it could be just, right now. It's not a, uh, like a servo mechanism that if the door is open for a certain amount of time, it will shut itself. Yeah. For some reason, you saying that I got triggered of what I did uh, a lot of today was having in the background different uh, SCP videos. I don't know if you know the SCP foundation um it's a bunch of horror stuff it's not a bunch of horror stuff but it's just like it, it stands for secure uh SCP. it stands for secure contain protect um and it's just oh. ran like there's just di- thousands of different scps mm-hmm. and they're just objects or entities um but anyways the reason you remind me of that was you know trying to like uh, create something like that to like discipline me and eventually it's going to gain sentience and probably kill me um, so that's a concern. He's left the door open for the last time. Yeah, or you know, it might be like I can't even remember the SCP number that I was watching today, but the door could turn into like an interdimensional door, and then on the other side of it could be like the harbinger of death for worlds, and that's not going to be good for humanity. I mean, and it's all the, because the, I left the, the door closed. The probability of that open. happening is really low. Yeah, but. The probability is zero. there. And you know how bad I would feel <laughs> if I let loose the harbinger of death of all worlds because I didn't close the pantry door? That'd be pretty bad. It would be on my name would go down in infamy. But hey, at least my name will be remembered. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, the uh, uh, yield go. I got a message from a. Uh, my fiance that just says the pantry door is shut because that was the last one down there. Nice. <laughs> Did you say the GoPro died? Oh, uh, yeah, the GoPro. Uh, oh, it's, uh, weird, weird. Yeah, weird, I know. Huh? I know. Huh. Strange, huh? Yeah. What's weird? Well, I, I, so I got a new GoPro, right? I'm all like, yeah, I'm going to make the make this better and all that. And uh, I get the GoPro, and now it uh, seems to be overheating. Oh, yeah, no, that's really overheated. If only I think I remember saying this exact thing is the GoPros overheat. If only someone had told me the GoPros overheat, you know? Oh well. So what I would have to do is I would have to lower the room temperature down like quite a bit from normal because otherwise, like if I had it just at the normal temperature, like day to day, it it wouldn't last the stream. Oh wow. Okay. Hmm. Well, hmm. sounds like you need to build a 3D printed box with a, you know, a little 25 millimeter CPU fan on the back or something. Like that. I, I, just, be loud. I just bought an, a, a good camera. And oh, <laughs> well, that's that, not that, a I mean, yeah, that's... it's also smaller than the GoPro. God damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember you showing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not cheaper than the GoPro. So there. Uh, well, <laughs> that's how that went. But uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to trying to flip this over here. Let's see if that does me anything. So, so bad yes. habit number like three or four, not listening to the advice of your friends. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> here we go, man. I've only announced once tonight, but you're you're racking them up. Oh, I've got. Start, yeah. Oh, I got. I got plenty. I've I've got a few of them. What I don't have is a camera. Sorry. But um. I didn't. I I had the notes open earlier, but I think I saw mentioned. Did you have a bad habit as well, Crux? Uh, 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it was it was for the after the mid show break. But oh. I mean, we no, can yours go is into it now if we want. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so what did I put? Oh, the uh, out of sight, out of mind, or out of sight, just ignoring it for lo- so long that it may as well be, uh, you know, not there. Uh huh. So, what kind of brought this on uh, uh, is uh, Pong had mentioned that, oh, yeah, garage still isn't clean. Mm. Oh. And like my garage has been a disaster for, oh, I don't know how long. And, you know, I go in there, I acknowledge that. Yeah, my workbench is a mess, and I can't find any of the tools because I haven't gone through to put them all where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then completely ignore that that exists and, you know, go on. And and then, you know, I'll get busy on something else or, like, you know, think about, oh, yeah, I need to do this thing. And then walk through a door and then completely forget about the thing that I was, you know, needing to do. Yeah. I've taken that uh, to extremes before where I will be uh, like working on like fixing something or cleaning up my garage, for instance, like I'll be like uh, cleaning it up and I'll think to myself, it is so messy in here. I need like an inventory control system and I need to like just put everything where it needs to be. And then so like I'll grab a couple things and then I'll go upstairs and I'll literally start working on like a list and like a map of how I want to like, pull this up in my home assistant and like just like i'll be able to click on like a room right and a list will come down of everything that should be in that room or i can search it up like where is a tape measure and i'm like hey the tape measure's in the garage because that's where it last was but the problem with that is that won't last a day because i just leave everything everywhere and uh, i'll lose track of everything right away yeah the and- <laughs> problem with that is so you've just given yourself another project to do yeah. instead yeah. of just cleaning, cleaning up the mess in the first place. And then mm. like once everything's clean, then maybe think about doing the other project. Do yeah, think, but, but then which, I start that I project and I don't finish it. Yeah. Do you think that's like an escape mechanism that your brain just kind of you know, triggers? Like, yeah, like, you know, it definitely is. I don't feel like doing this thing, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw all these other things in on top of it so I don't have to do the original yeah. thing. I don't want to finish cleaning the garage, so I'm going to build a system that will impress people and give me senseless validation for building something, but I'll never reach that because I get lazy and don't want to finish that project either. Right. Uh, so it's a vicious circle of not completing projects Man. ever. <laughs> that ties in really well with the thing I was going to bring up, but this stupid camera's killing me. Yeah, I've, I've had where... I've gotten to the point where I've just like started rage cleaning because it's like I cannot find the things and therefore yeah at, at a certain point I just can't put up with it anymore and then yeah the next I definitely like, reach those are, are just cleaning mm-hmm. <laughs> I I reach those stages too where I'll like rage clean but I have to like it has to sneak up on me um like i'll just be like i don't know like thinking about starting to cook but then i'll just get like i don't know like my mind will just be like but you should like clean up this little area so then i won't eat but instead i'll just clean um so i almost have to like psych myself out by doing another project i think i'll be more interested in and then just like spontaneously start the one that i never get to which is cleaning most of the time Yeah, I have a horrible. I have a similar situation. That's one of the things that, that I think kept me from doing the garage, just because everything was in the way. Like, I've got a, a Jeep Cherokee, you know, a little '92 Jeep Cherokee, and it is right in the middle of everything, and it is just taking up so much freaking space. It's ridiculous. And so I was like, oh well, in order to work on the work on the garage, I'm going to have to get that thing running first. And so that was that stopped me for an entire year. Anyway, I got it running, <laughs> so that was good. And then I was like, okay, well, everything's still kind of a mess. So now I need to like move some stuff around. I move some stuff around. And then eventually I got to the point where uh, where I could move and I got one, uh, whatchamacallit, I got one, uh, one shelving unit up and then it started getting too hot. And so I was like, well, it's too hot now. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. 
But so you you mentioned before about like what, 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 you you mentioned something about like just a second ago about the uh, uh, like kind of getting the reward for it being done or or like like throwing up a psychological roadblock essentially, right? Yeah, like I'll I have to kind of psych myself out in a way where yeah. yeah. So that was actually one of the ones that, that I had about uh, you know the, the trap of early announcements, which was kind of the catalyst for for starting the, you know for for doing the show in my mind at least. Um, and that was when you announce a thing, uh, it, you you already get that hit of uh, of endorphins or or what we said it the other night the on, dopamine on, the dopamine yeah you already get that hit of dopamine that you would normally get when you succeed and I and I had heard that before long time ago and i was like I was like i wonder you know how true is this right so i looked up an article on trello uh if you're mm-hmm. watching on youtube that link should be in there if not i'll throw it in here in just a second but basically what it said was uh receiving premature praise for a goal makes follow through less likely so what they did was researchers had people fill out a questionnaire you need mutton chops you do need mutton chops uh well, i can't grow mutton chops <laughs> Why not? I my it gets to a certain point and then I just have to shave it off. <laughs> and really, it gets to a certain point and then stops at that like just being annoying part. I wish I had so. that problem. <laughs> so this uh, I just threw the link up in the chat here for everybody, but uh, but basically the uh, oh, become famous. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. And also. Uh, Hey, speed rusher. Good hearing. You. Good seeing you. We'll do one of those. You can <laughs> advertise on another channel. But uh, so yeah, the uh, so basically what had happened was researchers had people fill out a questionnaire on their uh, commitment uh, to becoming a lawyer, and whoever scored highly, uh, they were they got their answers read back to them, right? And they asked them, "Do you intend that to be your answer?" Right? So in other words, basically saying like. Hey, did you uh, uh, did you mean to put that? Like, this is a very lawyerly answer. Is that what you intended? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, fantastic! You know, so each person was validated to themselves as being lawyerly, right? Hmm. So researchers, this is this is verbatim from the article. They concluded that whenever someone notices your identity goal, that social recognition is a reward that causes you to reduce your efforts. So in this case, the students who stated they were committed to becoming lawyers had already achieved that identity in their mind thanks to the experimenter's acknowledgement of their answers. Right? Mm-hmm. So, so basically, it's kind of like, I had always wondered, you know, like, I kind of thought that that was the case. That it's like, you know, my brain's already gotten the reward from doing this thing, so it doesn't have to actually do the thing. But yeah, yeah. it turns out that that's actually the case. No, I mean, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Today I learned. Yeah, I I definitely do that. Um, like I'll do it even as far as like pro- like hardware projects. Like I'll like say like I'm uh, obviously like a re- like studying for Raspberry Pi. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's technically a hardware pro- project at the beginning because you gotta set it up and if you're adding like the modules or hats or whatever on it. Uh, so I'll plan out this whole project, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll go over to like my electronics station or workstation. I'll set it all up and I'll just seeing it set up is enough for me to go, wow, I completed a significant part of yes. this project by just organizing and seeing it set up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. But I, I know it's been like 30, 45 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break. I'm going to go again, do something else for a sec yep. and then never get back to it. I have made forward progress on this. I'm going to go do something yeah. else. Yeah. 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 If, if it's really like, I, I I almost try to prevent myself from completing, uh, like not m- like major like tasks, but like from completing, like just like ta- like, I guess more, you know, major tasks, I guess, um, in the morning, because if I do, then like let's say I complete something like I if I'm on my way to work or something like that and there's a huge, huge problem or something like that, like yeah. how it is or something like that. Yeah. But if I get it completed within like an hour, hour and a half, 
I, a lot, a lot of times the rest of my day or the rest of like my mental energy for the day is like so shot. Um, and so like, I worry about completing too big of like, I guess, projects too early because I don't want to do anything for the rest of the day. If that makes sense. Like I need to work on stuff a little bit more like at a slower pace, because if I, I know like complete, like if I complete some, too early well then i gotta worry about if i messed up somewhere Mm -hmm. um like because maybe some's not supposed to take that long but uh i like that it's just occurred to me like that's that's happened to me before in the past where i've just like resolved something pretty critical and that was enough mental energy and victory for the day to where i'll kind of just like burn out for the rest of the day if that's, that makes sense. And that, that's a terrible habit as well. <laughs> so you, you start a, uh, you get something done in the morning and then you're basically like, well, I did a thing. My work here is finished. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to screw off for the rest of the day. Really? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I had similar things. I mean, usually what I'll do to try to almost like keep forward progress is I'll spend some time and just write down like an outline of like, these are all the tasks that actually have to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. And then just checking off one of those things doesn't, you know, key that, that, oh, I'm finished now. It's, I still have all these other things that I have to do. And yeah, I, a lot of the times end up getting like, if, if I complete a lot in the day, it's mainly because Others have been uh, pest, not, not pestering, because it's obviously like responsibility. But uh, I've, it's been more act like I have more like user facing access, I guess you could say, because I'm a network engineer or a, you know network administrator, however you want to dictate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if I get contacted, you know, by just like users or something like that, um, I kind of get more forced to like work, and then you know I'll get more done. Uh, but if, if I'm just like riding solo and I don't get contacted, I, I definitely start to like burn out or just try and be lazy. Mm. Um, how I combat that usually is I get up and I'll like go walk outside or I'll just like walk past, you know, people's offices or something like that. And they'll just like shout out to me, like, you know, something else and I'll get to working. And then that kind of like tricks my brain to get back into like, you know, workhorse mode. Um, yeah, it's really annoying <laughs> for my brain how I do things. Huh. So, uh, speed, uh, is it speed Russ, Russer, speeder, speed Russer? I'm going to go with speed Russer. Uh, says I have so many coding and hardware build tasks that I made reasonable progress on. I, on it, I feel satisfied. So I take a break that never ends. So many undone things. Absolutely. No, I, I do the exact same things. That, that's We were talking about that a little bit uh, earlier. It's like, once I see the finish line, there's an old co- comedian's bit about this. Like, when you are when you have to go to the bathroom, but you see your house. You're not there yet, but you see your house. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's a long... It, so it's a whole big thing. Uh, maybe in the post game. But, um, but basically, like, if I see the finish line, if I see how I can finish, I'm like, oh, no. Then all I would have to do is X, Y, and Z. So that's pretty much the same thing as being done. Oh well, yeah. yeah. So no, that's that is it is a weird thing. Like how your brain can be the most uh, ah okay. Like speed racer only Russer got it. Speed Russer, go speed Russer go. Awesome, but uh yeah no, it's weird how how much your your own brain can can try to defeat you so so harshly you know what i mean like like yeah like it knows like it's 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 playing just the you know just like the devil on your shoulder the whole time it's like there's the part of you where you know that if you complete that task or you know if you make forward progress on it it's going to be better for you in the long run but yet the other part of you sabotages yourself for no reason other than to just you know do it and uh then you're screwed yeah the other one i'll get a lot is where i'll get to it like i have this task that i uh have to accomplish 
and just getting started working on it is difficult because you know it's you know i don't know if it's like uh, in seems an insurmountable task or there's you know you just don't know where to get going on, on you know the thing you're trying to work on but getting over that initial hurdle sometimes will just prevent forward progress mm. yeah 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 i i almost fell into that trap with the drum machine with the uh with the, the thing i've been working on on, on the monday nights and i really feel like if it weren't for the monday nights that that pc pc board would just kind of sit there for like ever I'm looking at the wrong camera that would just <laughs> just sit there forever um but since i've got the show to do like like honestly this thing is has helped out a lot because it's giving me a thing each week to do on a certain day so it's really kept me kind of like focused you know like in a, in a routine in a, in a positive like yeah. productivity routine absolutely yeah. and, and you have to do it because you, know, you have the commitment for the show i do a lot of I had no idea how much work there is in running a Twitch stream right. Like, yeah. like you can start up a Twitch stream and you can just jump on and do whatever. And, and, and yeah, you can, you know, I don't know. Let's just say show up. Uh, this is this was a special situation for you tonight. But I'm saying like, you know, oh, every week you can just show up 15 minutes beforehand and, you know, throw up a show. You know, you could do that. I was on a show like that. No, but uh, you could do that. But but you're not if you don't if you put in the extra work it it gives people actual content to see. I guess is what I'm saying. Like rather than just it's the difference between hanging out on the internet and actually providing content. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love the extra that you're throwing, but it makes it a lot more polished of a product. I think so. I think it does. I Hopefully. I wonder how much it matters. Honestly, I really do. Like, like this is one of those things where I wish we had, I, I, I was, I tried this week. I tried, I really did to get a, a, a polling type of thing set up. And I just, it, I couldn't bring it home. I had too many distractions, too many bright and shiny things all around me. But I want to get a poll set up. Like, do you think that the production, the animations, all the stuff you see there in the background, do you think that that matters? Like, does that add to the enjoyment of a show? I, I think it does. And either way, I want to keep doing it because I like doing it. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I really wonder, like, how much of a difference there is on that. But yeah. But re- sort of related to that, like, you you talked earlier about the out of sight stuff, right? Trucks. Yeah. yeah. So out of sight, out of mind. Uh, right. So th- when, when I read that earlier in the week, when I was doing all the all the show notes and stuff, useless object permanence. Is the thing for me. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I've got, let's see, there is a box sitting right over over there with a whole bunch of different electronic parts and stuff in it. I'll probably do something with it one day. I, to be honest with you, in that box might be the uh, capacitor that I had to order last week. But it's been in that exact spot for about at least eight months close to a year and so i don't even see it anymore <laughs> we've got so much stuff we have a room in this house <laughs> still so okay zenify was nice enough to help me move into this place and and oh, and, yeah. and i and i very much thank you for for your <laughs> for your assistance there uh yeah. there are still some boxes that are sitting where you put them oh jeez <laughs> I, I swear to god there are boxes that are sitting where you put them. And that that's 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 what I mean when I say useless object permanence. If something sits in the place for too long, then that just, it just kind of fades into the background for me. Like I don't even see it anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Yeah, I totally get that. I mean, there is stuff over there that, that has been there for probably years now and I probably should do something with it. One of these, but it's out, it's out of the way, and I don't really go in that room that much. Other than, you know, <laughs> to go through the storage that is organized, yeah. But but there's other stuff in that that room that just needs to have something done with it. <laughs> that room over there, eh? Who needs it? 
Yeah, I don't know. We 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 did kind of blow right past the uh, the mid show break. What we're talking about, uh, just just I'll just do a quick recap here. We're just basically talking about bad habits of makers. Uh, you know, when you are trying to get a project, trying to drag it across the finish line, and you just you just you just can't do it just because of the the different ways that we sabotage ourselves. I guess really is what it's ultimately about. Um, and yeah, so that's what we're talking about. So if you've got one of those, uh, uh, similar to, uh, what speed Russell had earlier, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to shout it out in the chat and, uh, you know, do the show together, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today. I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think it's partially the camera screwing up, but I'm really, mm-hmm. I'm really glad I set up the second camera that I did that like five minutes before the show. I was like, ah, oh, this is a new camera. That was, that was smart to do. You know, mm-hmm. I have my moments every now and then. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut. So, but yeah, but when you can see, when you can see the finish line, my that's the the worst for me because like that's what happened to the CV to MIDI converter, and that's that's what that original the trap of early announcements. That's what that was all about, and that was like three, two, three months ago, something like that. And yeah, been, yeah, and and what happened was, you see what happened was. I got everything laid out in PCAD except for like the last port. But I know that that's going to be easy, right? So all I would have to do is do that and then send it off to the board manufacturer and then put a bunch of parts on it. And then I'm done. According to my brain, it just jumps right to, we're done. Yeah. That, that happens to me about 10% into any project. Yeah. I don't have to get to the finish line. I just have to start. And then I'm just like, like, let's go over here. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that I've been just just killing myself on lately, and and this, you know, when when we started talking about doing this particular show, I like started my mind racing. Oh yeah, I do this bad, and I do that bad, blah blah blah. But one of the things is creativity blocks. I'm the absolute worst when it comes to creativity blocks because I will just beat my head against it and. Boom, 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 until eventually I break the door down, you know, and, and do something. But what happens a lot is I will do that so much that I'll end up hating the thing. You know, like like with uh, uh, the lighting that I had, uh, I was I was messing around with the different lighting for the for the show. And one of the things that I was doing was like I'm like tweaking this little thing and tweaking that little thing. And then I'd step away from it. I'd come back and it looked like I had lipstick on. I was like, no, no, I did that wrong. It's just, I'd go back and I'd retweak it and I'd, I'd come back and I'd, oh, I look like Johnny Cash. Like, like you could see every wrinkle that has ever been on my face. Like, you know, it's just like, just the worst. And I was like, okay, no, that's not right either. And that would change the, the, the style of the show. Yeah. Kind of, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, in either direction. Yeah, I'm like trying to go somewhere in between. You have to get a cowboy hat for starters. I'm not opposed to it. I've never owned one. Well, I'm, I'm, I seem to remember like when I was really, really young, I had one. But I used to have several. Really? When I was, when I was growing up, yeah. But that's because my my dad's like a fly fisherman. Like that's like one of his like go to hobbies. And so when I was a kid, we'd go you know, to different rivers and we'd fly fish. Mm-hmm. And I mean, what's fly fishing without some waders and like a cowboy fly fishing hat on and, yeah. you know, a hook stuck in it, you know, whole gambit. I don't know. I think the, I think the, the cowboy hat fishing, I think that that's, that's probably more a Midwestern thing. I think if you're, if you're closer to the coast, isn't it the, the hat that like goes down on all sides? I don't know what those are called. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I know what those are called, yeah. I mean, there's definitely those in in fly fishing and flish, fishing in general, just like. But yeah, those are. I would say those are more coastal. You see those a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, the rivers that I fish on primarily would be like um, northern Nevada and some in Arizona. Uh, and yeah, cowboy hat. Cowboy hat's the way the way to roll. Yeah. Up there. Oh, that, oh, that doesn't work so well with like, the over the ear headphones. Oh yeah. That's a good point. It's hard. I usually just like put my head, my, you know, just like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I look like Cyclops now, but I can't see. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you know, there is a back of your. Oh, no, that doesn't really work, though, does it? No, because 
falls off. You do the DJ thing. I hear for some reason it actually stays, but I think it's because the nose is my bridge. Uh, or the bridge is my nose. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is, this, remember what I was saying earlier, this is the content that you come for. We're trying on headphones in different <laughs> ways. It's, it's, I mean, it's, some people might like it. I don't know really how you would like use your computer, but you know. You know? Also, it like, it like smudged up my glasses <laughs> when I did that. So that's another uh, con to this new headphone endeavor that we're speaking of. <laughs> headphone wearing endeavor. So you had, um, you had something about home maintenance, right? Um, so, yeah, that was on, on the, uh, you know, something has been this way for so long that you just stop seeing it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, the whole of my wall next to the garage. Really? Yeah, I have a whole, like, it was, there, it was, there used to be, before we did, there was, that's where the alarm system was, mm-hmm. the alarm system panel, and they, they took the whole thing, oh. just left the hole with the wires sticking out of it. Um, so I shut the wires back in, I bought the patch kit. That's part of the gas ratio. Yeah, I, I've had where like I've been doing a painting project, and there is the master bathroom where I started painting it uh-huh. and I never finished. Oh yeah. wow! Oh, and I, I don't even see that it's not. It's like halfway painted at this point. It's been that way for years. Wow. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm, to I'm, to be fair, I I really hate painting. It's just a pain in the butt. But, yeah. I hear you on that. No, I can't. Painting is like. But it, but it's the a worst. classic example of a thing being halfway done, and then at a certain point, you just stop seeing that it's that way. It's, yeah, so. it's even that. Yeah, no. The the hole is literally like right next to like the door handle and door lock. Like when you go to grab it, it's like you know just up and to the left right there. Mm-hmm. You won't miss it. Uh, but I miss it almost every single day because I'm blind to it now. Um, <laughs> and that's how it'll probably remain until I eventually fix it. Hmm. Which will probably be you know before we move out. Because <laughs> like days before be you move out. Oh yeah, because you you have to fix that to, in order to yeah sell the place or whatever. But... Mm-hmm. Or, or I could buy a fake alarm panel and just put it over the hole and uh, I'll just call it good. <laughs> is it drywall? Or yeah, it's drywall. Oh, that's easy. Uh, yeah, it's yeah drywall is easy to. It's same. It's that's the painting it afterwards that just, you know, really. Yeah. And I have, paint, I, I have the paint too. I told you guys. I definitely have the paint. I told you guys about the raccoon, or the raccoon, didn't I? No. Oh, uh, no. I would have remembered you talking about a trash can. Oh, oh boy. Okay. I had a raccoon. Uh, a raccoon. Oh man, like I don't know. I don't know. Pet? No, no, not as a pet. No, as a pest in the oh. house. <laughs> Wait, that house or no? Like the, in, house? in St. Louis, in, in St. Louis. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, there's, there, I don't think there's any raccoons. We don't have raccoons out here, so that's yeah. why I was gonna say. I was like, hmm, that would be something. You might need to call somebody <laughs> <laughs> oh oh boy okay yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a post game game story is the story of the of the 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 uh the trash panda in the house the ta- i definitely want to hear it the tale of the tell the tale of the telltale trash panda spoilers no it'd be what would the uh the cask of amontillado would be more appropriate i think anyway he lost me yeah that's okay po jokes like Someone at some point will probably see this and be like, ah, I get that. That's, mm-hmm. It was in the walls. I get it. So, but at any rate, yeah, I got the, I got the, got the GoPro there, as you can see. It's kind of crap. I'm going to keep working on that. But anyway, so, so the reason I brought that up is I haven't changed my oil since March. <laughs> and it was oh, in, your car. in my a car. A lot of people haven't changed their oil since March. I haven't changed my oil since probably before March. I haven't changed my oil since like November. That's, you know, actually, okay, that's a good point. I've never changed the oil in my car <laughs> because oh. because I bought it in uh, uh, when did I? Oh that? yeah, yeah, I bought it like towards the like last last June, last July, something like that, and I barely drove it, so it was ready in March, and then the world exploded, and I haven't driven. I, I filled my tank twice since then, wow. two times. So I filled my that I just filled my gas tank for the first time. Oh, really? March. Oh, wow. Dang, I filled mine probably a dozen times. Well, you've been working this whole time, haven't you? Well, I was I was working from home for the first two or three months, but yeah, now I'm 
back in the office. Mm. Which is unfortunate, but yeah, it is. I locked myself away and I, you know, <laughs> like I'm not I had one of my, co- my one of my coworkers, I was getting a breath of fresh air um, the other day. So I like, you know, obviously I had to leave my office um, and he's just like, oh, it's good to see you. It's, uh, you know, you're really taking this social distance thing seriously. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay away. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like we get into this 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 topic a lot, but I don't understand why that's so hard for people. I don't know either. I had to go to Home Depot today, uh-huh. like just like house product stuff, yeah. and uh, literally the cashier at uh, I, don't know, I, have a, I might have a, I have a mask here. Um, cashier, so he goes has a mask on, and mm-hmm. then he goes. <coughs> Really? I, I, yeah, oh, I was standing right. I, I was like, "Did I just see that?" And she literally pulled her mask down to cough at Home Depot. And I'm like, I just shook my head while walking back, like walking past. I was like away, so like she was like, say over here, and I yeah. was like, "Well, you can't really see orientation on the camera, anyways." But I was le- I was exiting mm-hmm. Home Depot, and she was just a cashier at another station, and nobody was at her register yet. She was just like waiting for people to come up. I used self checkout. Um. And uh, yeah, as I was walking by, she pulled down her mask to have herself a nice little cough and then put her mask back on. I thought it was genius. I was like, oh, we're living in America. Totally. Mm. Uh, anyway, yeah, every show can't be about that thing. Anyway, <laughs> we, we move forward. But yeah, so so what do you so what steps, I guess, do you take? yourself from sabotaging getting back to the point of this of this episode what like how do you move towards not sabotaging yourself uh i don't um i'm still in perpetual um saboteurization uh, no word. Uh, saboteurization good no word. Yeah. yeah yeah uh but i was i was gonna ask you the same thing and i did uh, actually look up just like a couple like you know strategies for productivity and habits and whatnot Uh um the in the first three the titles of them are the morning memo the three second rule and hardest thing first so i mean i think you gather everything except for the three second rule one the three second one states that uh you basically count down from three and at zero no matter what you have to start that task which is like a way to psych your brain out i guess you're just like okay three to you just count down and then right at zero it's like nope i i got to zero you're starting the task so Uh i guess that's what two's about but the morning memo is just writing your most substantial goals the night before and hardest thing first is self-explanatory interesting okay those Hmm. those are the tops but yeah this one has like holy crap it's a list of like 14 i mean i guess i'll it's a reddit link should i link it it's in sure a separate productivity Yeah. yeah yeah um so that's the that's the link that I'm looking at. Sweet. Um, yeah. So and there it goes. Yeah, to fourteen. Um, fourteen. I actually just caught my eye. At fear destruction or fear deconstruction. Fear deconstruction. Uh, yeah, starting a new workout regimen. T- uh, trying a new diet. Okay. Uh, phys- oh, physically write down every fear you have relating to the action that you're trying to complete. You'll find that writing them down and taking a moment to read will help you realize how ridiculous some of the fears are, eventually allowing you to work through them. Uh, okay. All right. Kind of a face your fears sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like all of these have like, it seemed like a uh, commonality. And it's the thing that I kind of described to you of how I actually start working on tasks and it's just psyching myself out. It's just like, well, for me, like I was telling you, it was like, I'll go to like make food and mm-hmm. I see a dirty dish and I'm like, okay, let me put this away real quick. And then I, as I'm putting that one away, I'm like, okay, I could put these a uh, couple away really quick uh, because they're like mostly washed off. And then that just starts the chain reaction of me just doing the whole, you know, flipping kitchen mm-hmm. real quick. And then I'll maybe cook or maybe not cook. So that's kind of like, you know, just like psyching out my own brain. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that usually happens for me, uh, but all of the others still have the the common root, which yeah seems to be in a way tricking yourself or like convincing it that you are approaching it. You're approaching the tasks um, 
I guess, different, Mm -hmm. like in a a different like mentality. If you assign it to like one of these like psychological tricks, you might have more, uh, you know, success in finishing or starting tasks. So maybe you guys know know more about this than I do. do. Have you ever noticed that if you tie two things together, it is so much easier to remember something, right? So like, for instance, I'd be willing to bet nobody here can name all of the Great Lakes, right? Probably not. Not like, not just like out of, not right I now. Lived in Michigan. So it, so, yeah. All right. All right. So Superior. Superior, <laughs> Michigan, uh, Huron, Erie. Uh, you, Michigan. Yeah. Oh, it's Ontario. So I, I wondered if you I don't think about that one. That's a speaker. That's fair. Yeah. So, so did you, did you use a uh, how is that pronounced? Mnemonic? You use a mnemonic device for that? No. Oh, you just knew in I your just, knower. I just I just pictured the map in my mind and. Oh, uh, okay. Like, so I've never lived anywhere close to them, and I can be like, oh, Sergeant uh, 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 Superior, uh, Michigan, Huron, uh, Erie, Ontario, every time, and the reason why is because. This is the stupidest thing in the world, but but here's something that you will never forget if you've gotten nothing else out of this episode. Here you go. Wrong camera. Over, get, over there. Here you go. Sergeant Major hates eating onions. I heard that when I was like eight, and I've never forgotten it. Sergeant Major hates eating onions. Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, Ontario. I've never lived anywhere close. I think I've seen maybe two of the Great Lakes seen them hmm. once and maybe another one or two of them in a picture but i will never forget sergeant major hates eating onions like i can't hmm. forget it northeast southwest on the compass never eat sour weenies oh mine was never eat soggy waffles oh uh, see yours was better you, i think you you had a better book than i did but i <laughs> either way i can't i can't forget it now so you know if you if you know north then you know the rest of them you know yeah, yeah. Um, but it's weird, like, like whenever you tie something to something else, like if you're trying to remember a, a phone number and you you make a song in your head as you're trying to dial it, you know, if, if you still have to look at a phone number and then dial it on a phone, you know, that's that's the way I always do it. You know, like uh, I'm gonna make something up here: uh, five seven seven three zero nine three. You know what I mean? Like you make up a song in your head that you would basically chant on your way to dialing the phone. Like, <laughs> but, but I guess what I'm getting at here is, I guess that's, as, as you dox whoever that poor person is that has that number. I totally made that number up. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some it, it, yeah, I think it was a six-digit number too, <laughs> or maybe it was seven. Uh-huh. I already forgot the numbers he said. <laughs> Five seven seven something zero nine three. I thought, whatever. I thought the history six is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, like, I don't know. Mnemonics is a, is a classic way of remembering things. Uh, you know, another thing is like associating it like with a picture or or music or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like a classic like study aid as well as like oh well I'm gonna you know associate whatever this topic is with this music and then you listen to that music when you're trying to do the test or something and mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's just part of, of of you know the the human creature evolving to find patterns in everything. Which is sometimes good, sometimes freaking awful, but you know sometimes it works. Unlike this camera. Sometimes. Only sometimes. Only sometimes. Hi, I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sin shop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us, build something and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. It's a lot of fun. Kind of, but Hey, anyway, we hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Yeah. So join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am of course the mighty pong and we will see you there. One take.